Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin, and if you are watching this, welcome to Slay the Spire. Released by Megacrit Games on November 15th, 2017, this game has since taken the world by storm as one of the most challenging, yet most addictive roguelike deck builders out there, selling over 1.5 million copies since its release. Its combination of thought-provoking gameplay combined with its subtle charm and dark themes makes for a game you won't soon forget after playing. However, it isn't a walk in the park to play. In this video series, I hope to outline the basics of each character, act, and encounter to make sure you slay the spire and not have the spire slay you. Let's begin. Each character that can take on the spire has a thirst for blood and the tools to do it. All characters start out with some amount of attack and block cards, and some special cards thrown in to ease the monotony. There are a few constants that each character shares upon their ascent. All characters start with some amount of max hit points, ranging from 70 to 80, 99 gold to buy more powerful abilities, and 3 energy per turn. This energy is what fuels our Spire's Climber's attacks, skills, and powers. These, however, are the only constants. Each character has their own tricks of the trade that makes them special and memorable. Let's start with the Ironclad. The remaining soldier of the Ironclads sold his soul to harness demonic energies. The most basic of the characters, the Ironclad is about hitting things very, very hard. He starts with 80 max hit points, the highest of all three characters. His starting deck consists of 5 copies of Strike, a 1 energy cost attack that deals 6 damage, 4 copies of Defend, a 1 energy skill that provides 5 block, and 1 copy of Bash, a 2 energy attack that deals 8 damage and applies 2 Vulnerable. Vulnerable is one of the handful of status conditions that either help or hinder you depending on who's dishing them out. Vulnerable in particular allows for any attack played on the target to deal an additional 50% damage. This allows our strikes to deal 9 damage and our bash to deal 12. Other status conditions include weak, which forces the user to deal 25% less damage with attacks, and frail, allowing the user to only gain 75% of their usual block card's value. Back to our demonic blooded brother, he also starts with the relic Burning Blood. Relics provide passive abilities to your character, most helpful, some harmful, and some deadly powerful. Burning Blood in particular states that at the end of each combat, heal 6 hit points. This is by far the most powerful relic of the three starting characters, and reflects the Ironclad's ability to dish out damage with reckless abandon. Ironclad specializes in gaining massive amounts of strength, and sacrificing cards in battle to reap massive advantages. However, he suffers in consistently gaining block and using his energy per turn as efficiently as would be expected. Don't be surprised to only deal 17 to 18 damage or gain 15 block per turn until your setup is complete, taking all incoming damage along the way. A slow, steady, deadly warrior from a clan long forgotten, the Ironclad will not soon be a forgotten warrior among your ranks. A deadly huntress from the Foglands eradicates foes with daggers and poisons. The Silent is a little frailer and more dexterous than the Ironclad, but is just as deadly, if not more so. She starts her run with 70 hit points, the lowest of all three characters, and the relic Ring of the Snake, which allows her to draw an additional two cards at the start of each combat. This ability to breeze through her deck right from the get-go makes her an agile assassin, ready to use all her tricks of the trade to eviscerate her foes. Speaking of, her starting deck contains four copies of Strike, four copies of Defend, one copy of Survivor, allowing her to gain eight block for one energy at the cost of discarding one card, and one copy of Neutralize, dealing three damage and applying one weak. However, the Silent is not a flawless assassin, and must sometimes duck and dive out of incoming attacks with her wide array of block cards and dexterity gain to boost them. Even while not playing cards, the Silent can still deal massive damage with her unique card text, Poison. 
Poison deals damage equal to the poison value on an enemy, then decreases by 1 until all poison damage is dealt. Quick side note, an easy way to calculate this damage is to take the current poison value, square it, add the initial poison value, and divide the new value by 2. Ha! Got you to learn some math along the way, sucker! Whether you're throwing daggers or dodging incoming blows, Silent will leave your foes quieter than she is. A combat automaton which became self-aware. Ancient technology allows the manipulation of orbs. The newest character, the Defect, may be the most inexperienced Spire Slayer, but is by no means the least apt. A jack-of-all-trades character, the Defect starts with 75 hit points, putting them right in the middle of our other two protagonists. In the beginning, your deck starts with four copies of Strike, four copies of Defend, one copy of Zap, allowing you to channel one Lightning Orb, and one copy of Dual Cast, allowing you to evoke your rightmost orb twice. In an effort to ease the channeling of orbs, the Defect's starting relic, Cracked Core, will channel one Lightning Orb for you at the start of each combat. Lightning Orbs deal three damage to a random enemy passively, and 8 damage to a random enemy when evoked. Evoking an orb gives a supercharged version of its normal effect, but removes it from your orb slots, meaning you can no longer gain any benefits from the orb's passive effect. Defect's keen focus on victory allows them to annihilate targets with ancient harnessed energy, while still dishing out massive blows and denying the enemy assault. Defect may be the jack of all trades, but is no jester in trumping the spire. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it was informative and piqued your interest in becoming a spire slayer yourself. In our next installment, I'll be discussing the start of your run and what information can be gleaned without even leaving the preliminary floor. If you enjoyed my commentary or insights, don't hesitate to drop a like on the video, or even consider subscribing to stay up to date on these videos when they arrive. Additionally, if you'd like to watch my live commentary on Spire Runs, check me out on Twitch. All links will be in the description of this video. Until next time, I've been Kevin, and may RNGesus bless you. Good night.